to me, what Jonathan Isaac of, of The Magic did was a little bit of a cop out because for him not to kneel, for him not to wear Black Lives Matter t-shirt and then try to circle back and make it seem like, well, because I'm my, my, my faith, my Christianity, that to me is a cop out because it's like, so, so your, your faith doesn't allow you to see the injustices that are taking place in the country. Yeah. Like, which one is it? You know, and, and I have yet to hear anybody from the Orlando Magic come out and speak and say, yeah, we had that convo with him. Miles Leonard sat there with his Black Lives Matter t-shirt and his teammates actually wrapped their arms around his leg, even though he was standing next to them, like, in show of support, understanding, like, he's going to stand, but he's still part of the movement. You know yeah. what I'm saying? What was Jonathan Isaac's excuse? Yeah, I have no, and, I have no and, excuse. And I, you know, it's funny because we're all, I feel like all three of us kind of have a different stance about this, which is great, but... As far as him, though, I think even though you're saying, like, what's his excuse and he's saying his faith, like, that's no different than old boy saying my brother served, right? And the reason being is, like, there <laughs> people are protesting differently. And so he doesn't want to because of his brother and he doesn't want to because of his faith. It's like, you know, at, at the same time, who 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 are we to tell them that that's the way they, if they don't feel comfortable protesting that way, they don't. I guess my the only reason why I, I'm I still celebrate them is the solidarity that they show in regards to still advocating and speaking up for it and still agreeing with what's going on. Whereas again, I hate to keep comparing it to NFL, but you know, I guess we kinda have to. People were like not kneeling, but then they were bashing him for it. And I think that's why I'm I'm c I'm okay with you saying this isn't the way you you would like to protest. Right. I mean, to me, the way the way I look at the, the, the Myers Leonard situation is similar to um, Chris Long and a couple other guys on the Eagles. Right. So to give to give everybody some perspective on it, um, when Malcolm Jenkins was still with the Eagles and he was kneeling, even though Chris Long said himself, you know, hey, I understand I'm not going to kneel. He would put his arm on his shoulder and show of support and like, all right, I'm, I'm not going to kneel. But I, I understand where you're coming from, and yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a part of the movement as well. It's just this is the way I plan on doing it. So that's the way I looked at it with, with Myers Leonard because he still took the time to at least let all of his teammates know how he was feeling and get their feelings on it as well because he didn't want to offend anybody by standing up. Yeah. And then he still and, – and obviously we understand this is just symbolism. We don't know what actions he's put behind this. But he still right. put on the Black Lives Matter T-shirt. To me – Jonathan Isaac standing during the anthem wasn't terrible. But then when you can't put the T-shirt on, it makes me question, like, so why, why wouldn't you at least put the T-shirt on to show, A, I, I support it. I just would like to stand as mm -hmm. opposed to kneeling. Yeah. You know, because, because a, a few weeks ago, there was a, a, a big uproar because LeBron said he didn't want to put a message on his jersey. And there were some people who didn't want to understand that. So it's like, so LeBron can't put his own name on his jersey and you guys are mad about that, but then there are people who aren't mad because you're not willing to kneel or show solidarity. Right. And and that's my bothering to me because someone like LeBron, who, yes, he wanted to wear his name in the back, but this man also created a charter school for black kids. Like, you know, like there's just, there's a lot of things that I'm like, you know, he's a person that's not doing it for the clout that he doesn't need the hashtag and for, Hey, I, I checked that mark. Oh, I supported some black folks today because I, at the same time, I don't even want you to wear this shirt if you're not really trying to really be about it. I don't even want you to, to, to give us the high five because there was a lot of white folks during the time of um, the George Floyd that, you know, we spoke about it in previous shows. There was a lot of companies I had said in the past, like if you're, if you're a big company and you have more, you know, Black Lives Matter hashtags than you do black employees, we don't want your hashtags. So you can't, you know, not hire black people, still think you're extremely superior, you know, do the the, the quick tap dance of I, I'm an, I'm, I show solidarity with you guys and then go back into your very racist ways. So I rather, I rather a, a overt racist than a covert and I don't even want the fakes. So I, in the same token, I'm kind of like, I don't even care about the shirt and, and all these the stupid little symbolisms. Not stupid, but the symbolisms that aren't amounting to change. So, you know, I just think that's really important. Yeah, what, um, what, what, what Jonathan Isaac, I, I was a little bit disappointed just because, you know, like, at the end of the day, bro, like, brother, you still, you're still a black man. And in the same way your NBA counterpart, uh, Sterling Brown, from yeah. the Milwaukee Bucks was, you know, harassed, you know, by, by police, uh, I think about two years ago, season and a half ago. 
that could be you too, bro. They don't, they don't, you, you're not even, uh, he's not even a, a big enough face or figure in the NBA to where mm-hmm. the average person walking down the street is gonna, gonna know you. So he hasn't even reached that point yet. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You're just a tall black man to a lot of people in this country. So for him, I was, I was disappointed that, you know what I'm saying, that he, he, he chose not to do either. Um, you know, I mean, I'm a Christian myself. So, so I, so I didn't I didn't think it was any issues. I've never heard anybody, you know what I'm saying, in, in, in my my church or any other religious people, you know what I'm saying, say that that it was an issue to do either one of those things. Um, you know what I'm saying? And and one more thing with Myers uh with, with Leonard, uh, I just wonder, so if you did kneel, what would happen? Like what does if somebody die if you if you if you chose to kneel? Does your brother lose his place in the in the in, in the army or whichever um um you know area of the armed forces he was in, like, what, what happens if you did choose to kneel? Like, what really would be so bad about you kneeling with your brothers? Yeah. That's the only yeah. question I would have to have. But I mean, even this, but even yeah. describing the country situation, it's like, I, it kills me when people use that as a, as a reason, because like, black people served the country and, and then came home and, and like, couldn't even eat inside. Like, served yeah. the country, came home, and we're treated less than, uh, you know, mm-hmm. equal. And it's like, so we, we have pl- my fa- my grandfather, you know, who wears his hat to this day, tells me how he came back and couldn't go inside and use restrooms with, with you know, other people. And he and his he came off the bus beam, beam, uh, beaming of pride, having served the country and got spit on for being black. Like, so I don't, I don't, that whole I serve the country and what this country means, I just... It's, racism is so embedded in American history that it's like when you're protesting racism, it's like you're anti, like you're, it's just, you don't have patriotism. Like it's, it's so, it's that embedded in our, in our culture that it's mind boggling to me. So what, and where's, where's the respect for your grandfather, for my grandfather, right. for all no. the black men and women that are so with, so where's their respect at then? If we just, if this all, if this is a, you know, you, cause you, you feel a certain way you think about the flag and, and national anthem differently, um, you know, them brothers and sisters served, you know, the same way. They fought in them right. same wars. They put their lives on the line, lost brothers out there as as well, and they were un- they were treated unfairly at war serving their country as well. And then to come back here and be treated worse. Right. So when when I, did they get respect? No, no, you, you're one thousand percent correct on that because we, we had that combo as well. I just think that when it comes to when it comes to yeah. the military, um, if you're raised in that environment, your mindset towards the flag is different. I had a small glimpse of it because my stepdad had joined the military when I was 13. So I spent, you know, my high school years in that lifestyle. But there are kids and they are friends, I should say, to this day that I have who grew up in that their whole life. So hearing the national anthem and standing for the flag means something different to them. So. I don't want to. I don't want to crucify him for that because you're right, Trip. It's, it's not. You know, if you take a knee, it's not as if you know a, somebody dies or your brother now is no longer can serve the country. We know that's not the case. But if he grew up in that environment, then it does mean something different to him. You know, what I'm saying similar to as you said, somebody who grows up strong in their faith, there are certain things that that are much stronger belief to them than it might be to somebody like me who, who didn't grow up in a church that way. Mm-hmm. So. I don't want to criticize him for it. I, you know, would I have loved to see him take a knee with the rest of his team? Absolutely. Yeah. But it's also one of those things, again, of, of understanding that his mindset might be a little different. We also got to remember, again, we're talking a white man whose experiences in life are completely different than ours. Yeah. So he may see things through the news or through social media that he never had to experience. We have all experienced those things firsthand. Mm-hmm. So we know that black, white, brown, yellow, if you served in a country, it doesn't matter because you're not white. You know what I'm saying? If you're not white, it doesn't matter whether you served in a country or not. Um, with Jonathan Isaac, and I don't want to like try to just keep comparing those. So I'm using those two guys because they they were the two players that stuck out the most over the yeah. weekend. Um, Jonathan Isaac, I guess to me, being a, a basketball junkie, knowing that he's from the Bronx, knowing that he's from our area, is like, bro, I know you've seen things or you know people who have experienced things yeah. that – you know, even even through your faith, you would have been like, man, this is an opportunity for me to make a statement and use mm-hmm. my platform the right way. And I just thought his explanation of it just fell really short of what it could have been. You know, I agree. We all need to see more action. 
um, taking a knee and throwing on a t-shirt isn't the only way to protest. But yeah. we, we've seen other players like Jalen Brown, like Malcolm Brogdon, these guys who were on the front line during the protest, even before the NBA even said anything. So for a player who has been kind of quiet about this whole situation, I haven't, I don't remember seeing Jonathan Isaac a part of anything before this. So then use your Christianity as a reason why you can't do it. And then try to double down and make it seem like, well, I, I, we need to take more action as opposed to kneeling. All right. So show us the action that you plan on taking it. Yeah. Who's who's we? You talking about everybody else and not Right. Right. Because what you doing, bro? Right. Because there are players who not only have taken action, but then were also more than willing to throw on the ter- the shirt and take a knee. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> it's 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 been crazy, but all you know, all in all, I'm I'm proud of the NBA as a whole for even backing all these players, choosing to kneel to not kneel. Smush Parker here, pulling me up to the Los Angeles Lakers, and you are now tuned into Real Fans, Real Talk. Uh-huh. This is Real Fans, Real Talk. Real Fans, Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real Fans.